much for taking the time to join our Instagram live today and thank you to Modern Beauty Supplies for hosting us again. Uh, my name is Zina El Sharif and I'm a field education trainer with Wella Professionals and today we're going to be doing an Instagram live. We're going to be talking about Wella's new line Color Motion um, and Nichelle is going to be showing us a really awesome technique on um, her mannequin in just a few minutes. Um, so Color Motion is a really great new line. It's about color and strength together in one product. It's gonna really retain your color and it's gonna strengthen the hair. Um, and there are three in salon products and three at home retail products, which we will dive into. Um, and I'm just waiting for Nichelle to join me here. Um, while we're waiting for Nichelle, I'm super excited about Color Motion because it's perfect for those clients who have vibrant color, who want to maintain their color, and who maybe have a bit more sensitivity in their hair as well. So like, I'm a perfect color motion client. Um, I color my hair pink every five weeks, and I gotta bleach out my roots every five weeks. So um, it's perfect to retain my pink, and it's perfect to hydrate my ends as well. Okay, so let me see if she's in here right now. Um, nope, I don't think she's in here yet. <laughs> All right, so while we're waiting for her, let's just talk a bit about Color Motion then. Um, so, Color Motion has, like I said, Color Motion has three um, back bar products. So, your three back bar products are going to be. The first one is, ah, that's our first one here. So our first one is our Scalp Protect Lotion. And our Scalp Protect Lotion is goes on the scalp before a coloring service. And that's just gonna help protect the scalp from any sensitivity um, before a coloring service. So, ah, there she is here. Oh, here we go. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I'm really I've, low there. <laughs> no worries. I got a little bit into color motion while I was waiting for you just because I had a few minutes, but I'll let you get started over there. No worries. Um, why don't you go in and talk about the Scalp Protect? Um, sure. And I will just kind of get my camera situated here. I wasn't expecting to be so low. No worries. Yeah. So like I was saying, the Scalp Protect is our first back bar product. Um, and it goes on the scalp before a color service and it's just really going to help um, prevent any scalp sensitivity or scalp irritation before a coloring service. So it's a lotion. It just goes on the scalp, kind of like in a grid like pattern. And then what we want to do is you just want to blow dry that product in just on a low heat setting before we do our color application. And that way it's not going to affect the, the color development at all. Um, I mean, what I, I mean, if you guys don't have time to blow dry your, your client before, what I would do is I'd probably put that scalp protect on and then I'd go mix up my color. And by the time you get back, it's going to be dry enough to start your color application. I'm, I mean, as long as you're not drenching that scalp with the scalp protect and really not drenching it with product, um, it's going to be just fine. And it's not going to affect the scalp at all for, it's not going to affect the color at all for development. All right. What you got going on there, Nichelle? So right now I am mixing up my formula. So today, um, before I got started today, that's what I was still blow drying. When, when I was like, oh no, it's 10 o'clock and I was still blow drying. I didn't want to blow dry on camera. So I um, prepped the hair with the pre-color treatment, which is this guy right here. Um, so this is like a porosity equalizer spray. So it really just preps the hair um, and evens the cam or evens the porosity of the hair to before color service. So this is really great for porous hair, 
or when you're going from light to dark or just any kind of color service. Um, this is gonna really even the porosity of the hair and give you a nice canvas to, um, to color on. Um, so what I'm mixing up here is I'm gonna have two formulas today. So my first formula is a back to natural formula. This is a formula that we use in Coolest and Perfect to go from light to dark. Um, and then the second formula I'm gonna mix up is just a toner for the ends. So um, today I'm going to be doing a um, kind of a root melting technique from light to dark. Cause I feel like in the fall, we tend to get a lot of people wanting to go from light to dark. Um, and sometimes it, we don't know what to fill with or, you know, or whatever. It's just nice. This is a nice formula that I like to use to take people from light to dark and kind of do those root melts. Um, that's a very nice, natural, neutral result. Um, so I'm just going to mix up my toner here. Okay. So you started with spraying the porosity spray. And I think this porosity spray is super cool because we all have clients with really porous hair. It's just, it just happens. Everyone's got porous hair. And we know that that porous hair um, kind of colors differently. It has a hard time accepting color. It spits out color a lot quicker. Um, so the porosity spray is really going to give that hair a more even surface, surface to color on. It's going to adjust that pH of the hair. And then that way we're going to be prepping that hair for a more, a better coloring environment. So I think the porosity spray is going to be um, a colorist best friend. I'm loving the porosity spray so far. Um, and so Nichelle's doing a back to natural formula on her blonde mannequin. And I, what I like about these back to natural formulas is they're super foolproof. So if sometimes when we have someone super light and they're wanting to go darker, we sometimes don't know what to formulate to kind of achieve that result. So we've created, um, I'll just bring it up here. We've created this chart that you guys can actually find in our Wella app. Um, if you guys haven't downloaded our Wella app yet, I strongly recommend you guys check it out. There's a ton of resources on there. There's a ton of formulation. There's a ton of product knowledge. And this exact chart is on the app. Um, so this is where Nichelle has pulled her formulation from. It's a really foolproof way to go from lighter to darker, and it's going to give us that natural result that we're looking for. Yes. So um, the nice thing, too, of this, and you can find this in the app. Unfortunately, it's not in the book. But um, the nice thing, too, is this kind of takes the guesswork out of it. Like, you just pick the level that you want and, or that you're trying to achieve and go to the chart and there you go, there's your formula, so. No thinking. <laughs> Have you ever used it before, Zena? I haven't actually. I, I didn't know this existed until I started working for Wella, so that's pretty cool. Awesome, cool. All right, so then my second formula that I mixed here is just a toner that I'm gonna use to kind of melt the ends. Um, so I mixed up one part nine stroke one six and one part nine stroke nine seven and a one part eight stroke seven three from Colston Perfect mixed one to two with pastel. So since I'm doing the back to natural formula on the root melt, I also wanted to do Colston Perfect on the ends just so it kind of all um, works together. All right. All right. Okay, so I have one half of the head that I've already done, and so I can kind of reveal it to you guys at the end. Um, so I'll kind of start working here. Um, I'm going to work from the back to the front, and the reason why I do that is just so it kind of keeps my sectioning clean um, and keeps the hair off of their face. So I'm going to be working kind of away from the face. Um, so it keeps it nice and clean and comfortable for my client. All right. Can you see okay? Yep, maybe bring her just a little bit towards you. Yep. That's perfect. There we go. Perfect. All right. So I'm always just making sure I'm keeping my sections clean and my product clean. 
So as you can see, I'm only putting a little bit of product on my brush. Um, I find when you're doing these kinds of services where you're taking someone from light to dark, you know, keeping your sections clean and keeping your product clean is really important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work away from the face and move my and work to the back of, to the bottom nape area. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to be tapping the roots first. And then um, as I work back up the head is where I'll kind of be pulling down my root melt a little bit. So what formula have you decided to go with? How dark are you taking this mannequin? So I went with the level five formula. So it's one half, five, five stroke zero. So a double pigmented natural. And then one half, six stroke seven, seven, which is level six, um, brown, brown. And then um, it's mixed one part color to two parts developer with 10 volume. Awesome. So what I love about the Back to Natural formula is it is a very natural kind of neutral result. Um, so for those clients that aren't looking for a warm result, this is a really great option. Also, the other thing to keep in mind is the hair does have to be in a healthy enough state to have a kind of hair color put on it. So um, in this case, she's a mannequin. So obviously her hair is uh, <laughs> in a good enough state. But we do have other filling formulas. So we have two other filling formulas that we use. So if Zena, do you want to bring up the coolest and perfect fill? Mm -hmm. Perfect. So this is a KP fill formula. This is using our special mix zero stroke four three with warm water um, to fill the hair um, before you would go in with your target shade. So this is really great. The kind of how our fail formulas work is if you're going to be going in with a target shade that is coolest and perfect, you want to be using the coolest and perfect fill. Um, or if you want to be going in with color touch because the hair is a little bit compromised, you want to be using a color touch fill formula. So that's why we have the different fill formulas. So if your client is not looking for a cool neutral result, like, and you're, they're looking for a kind of a vibrant, warm result, this is where you would use the coolest and perfect fill. So we mix it one part, zero stroke four, three to four parts warm water, and we would put it on the hair. And the timing would depend on the result that you want. So if you wanted um, <clears throat> a level six and higher, the timing would be 10 minutes. Or if you wanted a level six and darker, I believe the timing is 15 minutes. Is that right, Zena? Yep, that's right. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> <You got it>. <laughs> <laughs> and so the purpose of this fill is just to really um, put those missing pigments back into the hair before you go in with your your target color afterwards. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we always need to, when we're going two levels or more darker, we always need to kind of fill the hair first. Um, so this is, you would fill and then rinse the hair, no shampoo, and dry with a, on a cool result. Because you want to apply Colston Perfect on dry hair. So our back to natural formula that you're doing right now, Nichelle, that's kind of a way of giving someone like a more natural, cooler result without having to use this fill formula. Yes, exactly. Um, it's going to kind of fill the hair and give it a target all in one step. Um, but again, it's a very neutral result. So um if you were wanting something to be more vibrant or warm, that's when I would go in with the coolest and perfect fill. Another kind of option this is great for the back to natural is for if you're doing low lights or or something like that, where you you know it's impossible to kind of fill um, low lights and then pick the same pieces out and put a target shade on them. So back to natural is a really great option for low lighting as well. I'm just going to bring up this back to natural chart again, just for like the people joining in case people haven't seen it. So this is the, this is where Nichelle got her formula from. This is the back to natural chart that we have on our Wella Professionals app. 
Um, it's a really foolproof way to take your client from lighter to darker without having to, I mean, like they've really just taken the thinking out of it for us. Like this is the, sh the target level you want to go to. And this is the formula. It's pretty simple. Um, it's a way to have a really natural looking end result. Um, if you're not wanting to go like a really warm color, if you're not wanting to go like a chocolate color, or if you're not wanting to go like with a red undertone, this is a really great chart for someone who wants a more like cooler result, I guess you could say. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. All right. So I'm just going to kind of show you guys what I've done. So I've worked to, oops, <laughs> there we go. So I've worked to the bottom area and I've just kind of tapped the roots a little bit. Now I'm going to start working up and pulling my root formula down, which is my back to natural formula. I'm going to start pulling it down the hair and melting it into my toner. Okay. Cool. And what's your toner again, Michelle? <clears throat> so I did one part, um, nine stroke one six to one part, um, nine stroke nine seven to one part eight stroke seven three. So since she's a level nine and we're only going one level darker, I don't need to fill for the toning formula, but. So I love using these brushes for this technique because it already has the comb on it. So I'm just pulling down a little bit of the product and then combing it through and then coming in with my toning formula and melting that onto the ends. And this is where, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. This is where I'll kind of, um, melt or work the two products in together. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so I think because you're, because the two products are touching each other, is that why you decided for both formulas to be at Colorstone Perfect? That is exactly why. Okay. Um, that's not to say that the hair is going to fall off if I were to melt color touch into my back to natural formula, but I find Technologies work well with the same technologies, so that's why I decided to use Colson Perfect on the ends as well. Awesome. So speaking of color touch, um, let's talk a little bit about our filling options for color touch then, because you don't always have to fill with Colorstone Perfect. No, you don't. Totally. So let me bring up. So we have this chart again um, for our color touch fills, and this chart can be found on the app. <laughs> It can also be found in our Wella book, which is super cool. So um, again, the app and the book both have so many resources and so many formulations there for you guys. So this is another really foolproof way to, to fill. I can't, I can't tell you how many times I've been like in the color dispensary and someone's doing a fill and we are all like, oh, what should we use? What should we do? So like now instead of having to spend <laughs> five minutes overthinking your formula. Here's your formula. It's right there. Yeah. Yeah, it's it makes it really easy in the back room because <clears throat> it's just by level. So again, same with the back to natural formula. You look at the chart and you say, okay, I want her to be a level six and she's level nine. So we're going two or le more levels darker. There's my formula to fill. And so it's really kind of foolproof, um, which is amazing. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think when we're all booked and super busy, we don't want to spend too long overthinking our formulations, right? No, exactly. And um, it's nice that all the information and guesswork's already been done. So you know it's going to work. There's going to be no unexpected results. Um, so that's what's really great about it. And so for this, you would um, pre-shampoo the hair, towel dry, Put your fill formula on, let it process, and then um, rinse. And um, do you have all the instructions there? Towel dry. So you're going to rinse, towel dry, and then we're going to go over with our second formula, our target color afterwards. Yeah. Exactly. So it's, it's just, it's the same as, as if we were coloring the hair with color touch. So like when we, whenever we use color touch, we, you can use it on dry hair, but we recommend um, using it on towel dried hair. So we pre shampoo the hair first. So, so if we're going to fill the hair, we're going to pre shampoo the hair first. We're going to towel dry it. We're going to apply our fill formula, whichever one um, suits, suits the level, suits the clients. And then after that, like Michelle said, we're going to rinse 
and we're going to towel dry it, and then we're going to go in with our second formula. So I think um, with our color touch fills also, like the porosity spray is a really good tool for our, um, our fills with that as well. Do you agree, Nichelle? Yes, definitely. Um, just because it just gives you that nice, even porosity to tone, like to put your fill formula on. So it's going to take evenly and um, just give you a really nice canvas. Yeah, I think often when I have clients who are light and they're wanting to go back to, they're wanting to go darker, or like back to dark, they often do have porosity issues. So <laughs> I think the porosity spray is, is going to be the perfect tool for those clients. Um, I think even for clients, like I have, I have one client that I'm thinking of where um, her toner just fades so quickly because her ends are just so porous. So I think the porosity spray is going to be really great to use on her the next time <laughs> that I see her. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I mean, you don't just need to be using it in like a toning capacity or just when somebody's going darker. It's just, yeah, it's just even if you're refreshing ends and they've got really porous ends or anything like that you can use it for. Okay, so Michelle, we just have a question here in the question cards. Okay. Um, so the question is, why do I have to fill the hair? Um, that's a really great question. So as we kind of, you know, as we learn in hair school and everything like that, we always talk about underlying contributing pigment. So when we're lifting the hair, we expose underlying contributing pigment. When hair has been already lightened, um, and you need to go back dark, when you're going two or more levels darker, you need to replace that underlying contributing pigment. Um, if we were to just go in with our target shade that's darker, um, the hair, the color would look hollow or very flat. It wouldn't, you wouldn't get full coverage. It wouldn't really last. So um, filling the hair was replacing that underlying contributing pigment um, before going in with your target shade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I often find when we don't fill the, ha the hair, the color does fade a lot faster, like you were just saying. So the client's really just going to have to come back sooner anyway. You might as well do the whole service, book enough time, take a bit more time to do both processes, because the client's just going to have to come back sooner anyway. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. So if you guys have been watching what I've been kind of doing um, as I'm working back up through the hair... Um, some pieces I am just blending higher up and some pieces I'm actually painting my root shade a little bit further down. The reason why I'm doing that is because I'm kind of creating highs and lows in the hair. So I don't just have um, almost like one inch of roots all over. I'm kind of creating almost like a balayage look. Another thing that I'm doing is I'm actually using the back of my hand to paint my darker root shade and then front of my glove to paint my um, toner and the reason why I'm doing that is it just um, keeps any transfer over from happening so I am keeping kind of my sections clean and keeping it so the dark doesn't go too far down that's a great tip using different sides of your hands so that way you don't have to constantly be like wiping your hands or constantly like worrying about it all melting together too much yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think this is a really good technique also for, um, for clients who has maybe been blonde for a long time and wants to go darker, but instead of like putting dark all over, it's kind of nice that you're melting two colors together. So that way she's still getting a lot of definition and a lot of brightness. Yeah, I actually did a very similar technique to this on a client actually on Monday night. Um, we've been spent so much time getting her light, but she wanted to try something a little bit darker for fall. And she's actually showed me a video or a picture, sorry, of the root melt. Um, so yeah, all we did was we did a gray coverage roots and then pulled, um, some color further down to kind of melt it and then toned her ends darker. So we did exactly this kind of technique, um, just to kind of make her a little bit darker for fall. So nice way to change it up I think for a client for fall too yeah without getting rid of all those highlights that you've done already it just kind of still keeps some brightness and dimension in there without 
um, but then gives them an overall kind of darker look as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Do we have any other questions there, Zena? Um, I was just looking <laughs> at one here. Um, okay, so a question is, so if my, my client doesn't want warm hair, do I have to fill? Yes, the answer is still yes, but you wouldn't be <laughs> using a filling formula. You would be using the back to natural formula. Okay, so I'm just going to bring that up here. Yeah, so the back to natural formula is a really great um, formulation guide for clients who maybe don't want a warm overall end result. I find sometimes a lot of blondes, like especially ashy blondes, um, they're used to having like an ashy color. So when they go darker, maybe they don't want to have a chocolate or like a warm kind of darker look. So for those people who always want to keep it ashy, always want to keep it natural, um, this is the back to natural formulation guide that Nichelle is using on her mannequin right now. And this is what's going to give your client the, the ashiest end result when going from lighter to darker. Yeah. So I wouldn't go in with um, the color touch fill. This would be like the best way to go. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a question I have gotten asked in the field is what if the hair is compromised and we can't use Colston Perfect on their hair, but I still need to fill. A kind of like back pocket trick that I'll do is um, I will use my Color Touch filling formula, but I will formulate one level lighter than my intended shade. So say they wanted to be a level six ash, and um, so I would go in with my level seven filling formula and then tone, and then my target shade would go in with the, with the level six ash. The reason why I would do that is because we all know when going, like when doing an ashy toner or doing an ashy color, it's actually always a better result if we go one level darker than what they're at. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of like a little back pocket trick that you can do. It's not gonna give you as nice of a, like it's not gonna give you as neutral as a, <laughs> as neutral of a result as the back to natural formula, but um, you'll definitely get a more neutral result. Um, oh, okay. Someone's asking for your filling formula again. So the formula I used was five, five stroke zero, which is a level five double natural. And then I used a, a mixed one part with um, six stroke seven seven, or which is a level six brown brown with 10 volume mixed one to two. So one part color to two parts developer. I just pulled that formulation chart up there again. So this is where Nichelle um, pulled her formula from. This is our back to natural formulation guide. So again, this can be found um, in our Wella Professionals app. And the way this works is depending on your target level, you would just use the formula that's just right beside it. So Michelle's target level is a five. So that's why she's using that formula right beside it there. So it's a really good foolproof way for her to fill her mannequin and give it a really natural ashy end result. Yeah. And then I'm just using a Colston Perfect Toning Formula with um, pastel on the ends. Are you at the Are you at the front there, Nichelle? Or no, you're still. Sorry, you're pulling through still. Yeah, I'm almost at my front section, and then I'll kind of go through what I would do there. Okay, awesome. Um, do you want? It, should we go over kind of your next? steps after this definitely okay so after i finish applying i will process for up to 30 minutes so with the back to natural formula it will always say up to 30 minutes the reason being is if the hair is really coarse um, it can definitely pick up the color a little bit quicker so i will kind of check it at 15 minutes and then 20 minutes and then see if it needs to sit for the full 30. When doing color correction and stuff like that, going darker, I will always err on the side of caution and I will check my colors more often 
just to see how they're doing versus just setting a timer and walking away for 30 minutes. <laughs> totally. Um, so then after I'm done processing, I will rinse her out and shampoo with my um, Color Motion shampoo. Then I'll rinse, towel dry, and apply my 30 second post color treatment. So that's the product that I think we'll stop and talk about for a minute. So as you know, we have a post color treatment. It comes in a purple bottle, sits for three to five minutes. With Color Motion Plus, we've released a new post color treatment um, that is a 30 second post color treatment. Um, I love it for this exact kind of process or color correction where, you know, maybe I'm not mixing up another toner or I don't have another color service to go and do afterwards. So I, you know, I don't want to sit for three to five minutes. 30 seconds is really nice. <laughs> um, so I'd apply it all over the hair and make sure it's um, saturated into the hair and let it sit for 30 seconds. Rinse. And then I would follow with my um, conditioner or mask. Awesome. So I'm just going to bring up um, what our other post-color treatment look like just so that people can 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 see the difference and know that there's two. So this is our original post color treatment. Um, it's called service. So this essentially does the exact same thing as our new color motion post color treatment that Nichelle was just talking about. So both of these products is going to neutralize the pH of the hair and the scalp. It's going to um, stop any chemical action or, or neutralize any chemical residue. And it's really going to help with your color retention as well. So both of these products do the exact same thing, but this one, like the OG service, is going to be left on for three to five minutes. And our new Color Motion Post Color Treatment is going to be left on for only 30 seconds. So that's such a huge time saver, super awesome, love it. Um, I think that there's still like really great opportunity for the original post color treatment. Like people love it. It smells really good. I think there are times where you need three to five minutes at the sink. So there's a place for both of them. Yeah. Yeah. Like if I've just done highlights um, and I rinsed out my highlights and I, I got to go back and mix my toner, I'll use the, you know, the original post color treatment because that gives me three to five minutes to go to the back, mix my toner, maybe have a sip of my coffee, because, you know, we all drink cold coffee all day. Um, and then come back and rinse and apply my toner. Where the 30 second really comes in handy is if you immediately have to do another color service, or if you're just done like an all over color service and you don't really want to wait the three to five minutes, because it's just an extra three to five minutes at the sink, and we all know people are in a rush. So this just kind of makes it a very quick express service. Um, and the other question I get asked about the new post color treatment is, can we use it in our glossing formulas? And the answer is no. That's where the original post color service would come into play. Oh, that's a good, that's a good call out, Michelle. Yeah. Because we love doing our glossing services. So we need that. We need the original post color treatment. We can't get yeah. rid of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So both of these, either of these will go on all over the hair and the scalp after every coloring service. So if we were doing um, a fill and then a second color, this would go on in between that fill and that second color, and then also after that second color as well. So we, we always want to have our post color treatments um, as the last step on the hair, unless you were to condition afterwards. Yes, exactly. So I do find a lot of times after I've used the original post color treatment, I almost don't need to condition afterwards. Totally. But um, Sometimes when you're when the hair is compromised or sometimes people have that dry kind of fuzzy hair, it just needs a little bit of extra. So, all right. Now I'll quickly kind of go through what I'm doing in the front here just so you guys know, and then um, we can talk about the, the care line. Sure. So right now I'm working in the front section. I'm still working back away from the face, um, mostly just because it keeps my sections really clean. It keeps it off her face. So when she's processing, she doesn't have all this 
you know, wet colored hair in front of her face. And so I'm working in kind of small ish sections. I don't want my sections to be too wide because then it's really hard to control. So I'm kind of like, it's like a peace sign. Perfect. And I'm applying to the roots gently first on both sides of my section, making sure it's nice and saturated. Again, my brush is still very clean. And then depending on where I'm at, I'm still going kind of further down in one section and higher up in another section. So in this section, I actually went further down in the previous section. So I'm just gonna comb it slightly and then go in with my toning formula on the ends. Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna get up to the front of the hairline here. I'm going to just kind of tap the roots because we want to keep it mostly bright there. Awesome. Thanks. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring up a picture of our new Color Motion shampoo that we briefly mentioned earlier. So this is, this is one of our, um, our at-home care products, or you can use also on the back bar. So this is our Color Motion shampoo. So this is gonna give up to eight weeks color protection. Um, I love it because it's a really nice light shampoo. It's clear, so it's not super heavy, but I do find it pretty moisturizing, even on my bleached out hair. <laughs> so or have you been using it, Nichelle? Do you love it? I do. I, so I switch between that and my nioxin. <laughs> um, and I love it. It's in, on clients. Every time I use it on a client, they're like, oh, that smells so amazing. What is it? So. Yeah, I think the, I think the whole color motion line smells really good. Yeah, definitely it does. Okay, so that's our shampoo. Um, and then I'm going to bring up our conditioner as well, Michelle. Okay. Okay, so that is our conditioner. Um, it's a really lightweight moisturizing conditioner. It gives a ton of shine to the hair. It makes it way more manageable. I also don't find this product too heavy either. Yeah, yeah, it's very lightweight, um, but still gives enough hydration and without being too much. Okay, and then the last at home or retail product um, is my personal favorite. It is the structure mask. So I personally love the structure mask. It is perfect for my hair personally. So the structure mask is formulated with um, Wellaplex bonding agents in it. So it's super repairing. It's also very, very rich. So you don't need a lot of it. I feel like I've been using it for so long and every time I open it, it looks like I've used nothing. <laughs> and I'm not shy about using it. Like I probably put way too much. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you know, it spreads on the hair really nice. Um, I find I don't need to use a ton of it to get it all over the hair and make sure the hair is all saturated. So that little tub should last you a good long time. Um, and it's very, very reparative on the hair. Like before I went dark and I'm, I'm still using the structure mask, but I do use, um, I was blonde before and we had used blonde reflex. So I was keeping up with the structure mask every th three to four shampoos. Um, and I have to say like, it really kept my hair feeling healthy. Um, and I had very minimal breakage from going blonde, which was nice. Yeah, I love the structure mask. I think that's definitely going to be a stylist favorite also, just because it has that Wellaplex bonding agent in it. So like that already just sounds super awesome to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So a question I get asked quite a bit is, um, why would I use Color Motion Plus over Brilliance or say Fusion Plex? Mm -hmm. So kind of Color Motion Plus is positioned right in between both of those products. So Brilliance is our color protection line. So you get up to seven weeks color protection. And then Fusion Plex is our repair restore line um, that helps kind of repair the hair um, that's been compromised or anything like that. So Color Motion Plus does both and that's what's amazing. You're gonna get up to eight weeks color protection and you're gonna get repairing benefits as well. So that's kind of, it's great for that client that is not only has colored hair, but is also worried about damage and, and everything like that. So that's kind of where you would use either or. Yeah. Okay, we have another question in here. What's 
what's the difference between the mask and Wallaplex number three? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, the difference between the max and the, the Wellaplex number three, they both have the bonding agent in it. So they both can be used after a Wellaplex service. Kind of um, how I would position it is if someone was looking for color protection and repair, I would get them on the um, structure mask. But if someone was looking for just repairing benefits and they're just coming in for a Wellaplex um, strengthening service, then I would send them home with the number three. I hope that answers that question. Yes, awesome. That was a great question. Keep asking your questions, guys. We love answering them. Yeah, awesome. So I'm coming to the front here. I'm almost done. And then I will show you guys my finished side. At the front here, I am just kind of tapping that root formula on and being very um, kind of minimal with it because I want to keep some brightness around her face. Um, so I'm working in kind of really fine sections. I'm being very mindful of how much product I have on my brush. So I'll kind of show you a very minimal amount of product on my brush. And I'm just kind of tapping the root a little bit. Awesome. So those are, I, we just went through all of our products. So um, that's it. There's the three at sorry, three at home retail products and the three in salon products. So again, that's the, the shampoo, conditioner, mask, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. We all know how to use shampoo. We all know how to use conditioner and a mask. So a mask is left on for five minutes and then rinsed out. And then just to recap, we have the Scalp Protect Lotion and that goes on before a coloring service on the scalp. And that's just going to help prevent any potential discomfort to your clients during a coloring service. Um, it's not going to affect your um, color at all. It's not going to affect your color development. Um, so I think that that's a really great one. It could also be used um, on a bleach out client as well. So I think that's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of clients have scalp sensitivity when having a bleach out. Yeah. <laughs> And then the second product, which Nichelle used on her mannequin before she started her color application, was the Color Motion Porosity Spray, which I think is going to be a colorist's best friend. Um, so that's going to help even out the porosity of the hair before toning or before color correction. It's just going to help give the hair a really more even surface and balance the pH. Um, and then the last one is our new post color treatments. Um, and it only takes 30 seconds to work. So it's a huge time saver at the sink. Um, and that's going to balance the pH of the hair and the scalp. It's going to increase your color retention and it's going to get rid of any chemical residue that's left in the hair as well. Yeah, perfect. All right. So this is my finished side. See the hair is all kind of sitting back away from the face. So it's nice and clean. Um, you can see her hairline's nice and clean and everything like that. You can start love that. processing in the back. I love that hairline, Michelle. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the big reveal, because I did this mannequin a few days ago, um, just so we had a finished shot side, side to show you guys. Um, let me just turn her around. Oh, I'll bring her up closer. So this is my finished side. Oh, awesome. So you can see um, where it kind of goes down a little bit further in some of the sections. And I have nice, even coverage. And you saw how light she was before I started um, coloring. There's no splotchiness. It took nice and even. It's a nice neutral result. So when you're going two levels more or darker, this is a really great option for that kind of nice neutral um, root shade. And then there's the kind of color on the ends. So just toned her down a little bit. I'll show you in the back here. Oops. That looks so beautiful. I love how natural that root is. Yeah, so there we go. Ooh, contrast. Yeah, it's nice and contrasting. Um, and then we have like a darker shade on the ends there. So that's kind of the end result that I got while still keeping some brightness around the face. So you can kind of see how working in one section pulling it a little bit lower and then keeping another the next section a little bit higher how it gives you that highlighted 
kind of balayage effect. Awesome. Everyone's loving it. You're getting a lot of amazing, gorgeous hearts here. So everyone loves your look. Yay. Thank you. Um, I thank you everybody for joining. I'm really, we kind of wanted to talk to you guys about Color Motion Plus, but we also wanted to show you a technique as well and how we would use Color Motion Plus in the salon just to keep it a little more relevant and interesting versus just sitting here talking to you guys about products for 45 minutes. So yeah. <laughs> I hope you guys all really enjoyed it. Um, and thank you for, for joining today. Thanks, Michelle. Yes, thank you guys so much for taking the time. We love, we appreciate it so much and we love it. Um, we'll be back. So next week, Nick is going to be back on Tuesday at 11 and he's going to be doing a creative melt on his mannequin. So you guys won't want to miss that. I'm sure that's going to be awesome. Um, and yeah, I'm sure Michelle and I will, will be back again sometime. Yeah, definitely. Thanks everybody for joining. Um, did you have our handles there? Oh, Zita? sorry. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you kept me on track this whole live. So that's perfect. Thank you. <gasps> So here are our handles. Um, I would love if you guys gave us a follow, but the biggest one call out there is make sure you're following Modern Beauty Supply and also make sure you're following Well of Canada West. Um, we'd love to see some of your guys' work on there. Um, so yeah, tag us, follow us. Um, yeah. Awesome. awesome. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great Thanksgiving. Yes. Thank you, Modern. Thank you, Zena. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. Bye, Bye everyone. Thanks.